when my old thickness planer broke, I took it apart and I saved the cutter head. And I'm gonna use that to build this joiner, but first of all, I need to change the pulley. The original had one for a multi-V belt, but I don't wanna mess around trying to get a longer one of those. So I'm gonna change it for a standard pulley, but the problem is I don't have one that fits on the shaft. So I'm gonna make the shaft a little bit smaller. I'm gonna do that on my wood leg. Okay, it took three other tries to, you know, taking it off and putting it back on, but I'm there and it's a good fit. Then I can tighten up the set screw. The end of the shaft is threaded, so I figure it wouldn't hurt to fill it up with epoxy just to close any gap. And warming up the pulley with a heat gun will make the epoxy thinner so that it flows better. Now that I have the cutter head done, I need a way to mount it, and that's bearing blocks. I'm making those from solid maple and steel bars on the top and the bottom. After drilling the hole, I need to cut the block as well. So I figure it's best to use a scrap of plywood pinned in place to join both sides. And that lets me cut one side, and then I can flip it around and cut it again without the two parts coming apart. Next, I can work on the frame, and that's two long rails made from three quarter inch plywood. And I'm also gonna cut some solid maple to cap the top and bottom of each rail. The glue I'm using is polyurethane construction adhesive. Get that spread on, I get the wood in place, and drive in a few pins. I let the glue dry, and now I'm drilling the holes for the threaded rods that will hold the bearing blocks in place on the tops of these rails. And once again, I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive to glue the rods in. I let the glue dry overnight, and now I can get the cutter head put in place. All of the clamps that you see here are holding the bearing blocks in place while I tighten the nuts. For just the next few hours or so, depending on when you're watching this video, if you click the link in the description below, for a limited time, I have bundled together nine of my top woodworking plans for 70% off. This offer is only available until Sunday at midnight. So now is your opportunity to get nine of my best, including my latest project, the locking table saw fence. Along with that, you'll get the plans for my workbench, deck chair, patio table, large toolbox, miter saw station, drill press cabinet, woodworker's toolbox, and my strap clamp. If you're looking for practical projects to do in your shop for the next few hours while this offer is still available, simply click the link in the description below to access this limited time nine project plan bundle. And once again, thank you for your support. Next, I'm going to put in the motor. So I'm cutting a panel from three quarter inch plywood to put in one end for the motor to bolt to. But then out of the way, I can mark the holes on the side panels here. I've got my beam compass set to three and a half inches to make a seven inch circle. Then I'll drill a pilot hole for the jigsaw and cut out the opening on both sides. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here with the motor lifted up slightly on this side. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a strip to the front of the piece of plywood for the base of the motor to go against. And then on this side over here, I'm just going to put bolts up through the bottom, two of them, and put nuts underneath the edge of the uh, plate here to hold the motor up, but also put nuts on the top to hold it down so that it tightens this belt up nicely. And it also bolts this down tight to the frame. Now at the front of the motor here, all I need to do is drive in a couple of screws to hold that plate down into that corner where I added that strip across the front. All right, that looks really good. Everything is lined up properly. The motor feels nice and solid. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna vibrate all over the place. And it's the type of thing that you set and forget and don't have to mess around with in the future. It's actually a few days later. And what I did in the meantime was I built the leg sets for this. What I found was that it was getting too heavy for me to easily move around and work on. So I figured now was the best time to build that stand and get it out of the way. 
So back to working on the bearing blocks here. I'm drilling countersinks and then I'll drill a pilot hole through. And then before I dry the screw, I'll get some glue in there and that'll lock it down tight to the frame underneath. And what these will do is they'll add a huge amount of support on either side of the wooden parts of the bearing blocks and lock those in place. Next part to work on is the outfeed table. And I'm starting with these strips of three quarter inch plywood. I need to get those accurately lined up and then temporarily fastened to the rails. And I'll replace those screws later with bolts and that will let me adjust the table up and down. I did the same on the other side over here and I've got the top that goes in here like this. Now I could just leave this square on the end but it would probably be better if I angled it as well. And then I can bring it back over and mark the actual length that it needs to be and trim that off as well. I'm ready to fasten it now to the supports. I'm gonna spread the glue, fire in some brads to hold it until I can get some screws driven in as well. I wanna use steel on the top of the outfeed table. This is 1 8 of an inch thick plate. I'm gonna bring it outdoors, cut it down to size, bevel the edge that's close to the cutter head, and then I can screw it down to the table underneath. Okay, with that out of the way, I've got one other thing I need to do with this, and that's to add the pieces on the side here that will allow me to precisely adjust this table. I'm making these from solid maple again, and I need a couple of holes, one in each end for the adjustment bolts. And I'll also use these as a template to drill the holes in the top of the rails. I wanna put screws where the heads of the bolts contact. If it's just bare wood there, it'll compress. Now that I've got the screws put in, I'm going to tap out the holes that I drilled in the strip. With the adjustment bolts in place, I can get these fastened to the side of the outfeed table on each side with two inch screws. There is one other thing that I can do before I leave this to dry overnight, and that's to take the whole thing out again and fasten the chip baffle that I made earlier, but still didn't put in. I've taken the outfeed table off again, and to make it adjustable, like I talked about before, I'm making these holes bigger. I also made the holes larger in the outfeed table, and I put T-nuts on the inside for the bolts to screw into. With the outfeed table done, I can start working on the infeed table. Once again, I'm making that from 3 quarter inch plywood. And this works very much the same way as the outfeed table does fits in here, it goes up close to the cutter head. What I need to do next is I need to make the ramp part of the incline plane, the part that's attached to this table right here. And I've already cut it to the correct width. I just need to tilt the saw and cut it at 45 degrees. The parts I'm cutting right now are the braces for the incline plane. I need two of these, one on each side. All right, a little bit more of the polyurethane construction adhesive and a few brads to hold it while it dries. Well, that seems to be a good fit right there. Yesterday, I brought this into my house where it's warm and I gave it two coats of water-based polyurethane on all surfaces. I also built this part here, which is the ramp that you know interfaces with this. There are two knobs that'll tighten these two together after you adjust the table up or down. I'm drilling the holes in the ramp for a 3 8 inch T-nut and the holes in the inclined plane need to be slightly bigger to allow for that adjustment. Okay, this just drops in like this. And what I need to do is I need to set up something here to hold it up in place in line with the outfeed table so that I can get the ramp attached to the side panels. And exactly like I did with the outfeed table, I removed those temporary screws after 
and I replaced them with 3 8 inch bolts with T-nuts on the inside. I also added a very simple adjustment handle on the back and how this works is you loosen those knobs and then you turn the handle to adjust the table up and down. After you have it set, you tighten the knobs again. At this point, the bigger stuff is done. All I need to do is add a power switch, build a guard that covers the drive belt and make the fence. After it's put together, I can try it out on the machine. And you can see basically here how it's gonna work. But the next thing that I need to make is the clamping system for this fence. And once again, I'm making that as simply as I can. I'm just using pieces of hardwood on the end to position the guide, and then a bar across the top that will clamp down onto that guide and hold it in place. And I must have got lucky here because this looks really good. You know, 12 inch jointers are not cheap. And this one has been working great. As I mentioned earlier in the video, now is your opportunity to get nine of my top woodworking plans for 70% off. But this offer ends very soon, so act fast.